Hello ladies and gents, it's the Beanie 101 here and I'm bringing you some more XCOM Enemy Within and I'm excited to say that we're going to go for the big one. We are going to assault the alien base. I finally decided that now is the time to go for it and for that we need our absolute best. So I'm clearing out the team. I'm adding in our best troops. So we're going to start with Johnny McMack. I think Derek Belair is going to be in there. Rockefeller G. She can come along. Little Bucky can also come along. And then the question is, which heavies do I want to bring? Do I want to bring another assault? Do I want to bring someone like Doug Sheehan? Or Nikki Seabee? We definitely need... Uh... I think I'm going to bring two supports and one heavy. Mainly because supports get to move around a little bit more. So it provides me with a little bit more of a tactical advantage. I also want to keep as many of the parts and uh, bits and pieces that we acquire from the alien base intact and you can't really do that with heavy troopers. I do want to see who's got the best aim and best will combos. It looks like it's between Oreo Winfrey and our good friend Zhang and I think Winfrey wins. So this is probably going to be our team. I'm going to customise them up slightly. I'm going to make sure they've got the best weapons that they can possibly equip. Complete with the best armour. And we'll see where we go. But thanks ever so much for watching the XCOM series, guys. I really do appreciate the support. Uh, my XCOM videos have been received really well. And I've had some really, really positive comments. But those of you who have not been following the story so far, what on earth are you playing at? Go into the description of this video, find the playlist, start from the very, very beginning. Because all these guys, all these troops with their names and their backstories and everything that they've done so far, you don't get a sense for quite what they've achieved unless you start from the very, very beginning. Now this alien base mission is a critical part of the game. I'm super excited to be taking it on at this point. Johnny McMack, check him out. 26 missions, 56 kills. This dude is an absolute beast with 125 aim. Cannot go wrong at all. And I think uh, I'm pretty much there. Derek Belair is... Oh, we can equip the slightly better mech suit. That's better. And that gives him more HP. Oh, are we ready? Is this the team that we're going to take? Nikki CB? Yep, I'm happy with CB. I'm happy with little Bucky. Rockefeller has definitely got to come along. 85 aim on an assault is nothing to uh, turn your nose up at. The question is, do I want to equip her with... A plasma rifle, or do I want to give her a shotgun? Uh, not sure, not sure, not sure. Maybe we can send somebody else. Ah, you see? Uh, I'm just checking everyone's got the best armor. So Rockefeller's definitely got Titan armor. You know what? I think I'm going to go the plasma. I think that's the most damage that we can do. So here we go. Let's cross our fingers. Let's cross our toes. Let's head off. Check out this alien base. We're taking the best of the best with us. We've got weapons. We've got good equipment. We've got good armor. We've got a mech covering our back. Touching down. Thanks to Dr. Rollins' research. We've got more skills than we know what to do with. This is Operation Swift Dirge. To breach the alien compound. We've only got one chance to make this work, though. So let's make sure we do it right. Right, so we need to penetrate the base's defences, neutralise all invader forces, identify and capture the base commander if possible. 
Now there's a question. Did I equip anybody with an arc thrower? I'm hoping one of my supports has the arc thrower. But here we are. We're in the alien base and we're going to take this slow and steady. We're looking around. God only knows what they're doing to these people. All the more reason to blow them to hell. Get moving. Yeah, this does not look good. There's our mech jumping in right at the last minute. Bel Air, a little bit so late to the party. Visual confirmation on the hostiles. I wouldn't get too comfortable though. We're expecting heavy resistance. They're probably moving into position as we speak. Now, for those of you who have not done a base assault in XCOM before. This looks like it's exactly the same base assault from the Enemy Unknown game, so it hasn't changed with Enemy Within. There are very clearly two distinct paths in most cases that you can take your troops. And it's worthwhile uh, on these little sections until you can congregate together again at a more central area to actually split your troops up into two groups looks of like three. Where they've been taking the abductees. But that still doesn't explain what the purpose of all this is. Now I want to make sure that I've got enough firepower and someone to heal uh, on each of the parties that I'm splitting up. Yes, sir. So Micmac and Belair, let's move these to the left hand side uh, and send a support their way maybe. Now we do have Little Bucky who has mimetic skin, so we can also use Little Bucky to scout ahead. But Nikki CB has her med kit, so she's going to be helping out Micmac and Belair on the left hand side. And then we've got some rocket support on the right hand side. And we also have Little Bucky who can scout a little further ahead if she's in full cover. Oh, shit, I didn't want to uncover those guys. Well, this is a good start. Uh, we have some mutons. This could be interesting. Can we get enough shots off to kill these guys? I definitely want to get into cover first and foremost. Belair can see, and he's got a 93% shot that does up to eight damage. I think I'm gonna take this. It did seven. And he's moving towards Derek Belair. So we can kite these mutons around a little bit. Uh, okay, so he's hardened, chance to crit. So I have almost zero crit chance because he's hardened, which is a pain. I would love love to take a shotgun to this guy's face. Bloodlust allows the Berserk to charge the enemy that wounds it in Bull Rush. Charge the opponent, uh, no, charge the enemy to unleash a devastating melee attack. Now the problem that I have taking this shot is the Muton is going to kite towards me. So if anything, what I'm best off doing is moving someone a little further away. See, I can't. Mm. Maybe I run and gun. Oh man, I can't even run and gun into cover. Rockefeller's going to have to take this shot. She's got enough health to be able to tank it. Oh, let's take two shots. Let's use rapid fire. Two shots. Come on, 69% chance. One shot. Two shots. Ha. Huh. Rockefeller G coming up clutch. And it means Little Bucky has um, not the greatest of chances against this Muton, but let's keep him where he is with su some suppressive fire. And that should allow Oreo Winfrey to get into position where she's in cover and she can make a shot next time around. Now this Muton may be able to shoot at me. Oof. Thank God he missed. Damn, that was close. 
And it looks like we missed all of our shots there. Micmac is a little bit out of the way. He can't see these mutons, so this... The squad sight ability that we usually use with great effect can't be used in this particular situation. 35%. This dude must be behind full cover. And the problem that we have with that is it means that, generally speaking, I'm going to have to either blow his cover, which means less resources, uh, or get up close and personal. I'm going to blow cover first and see if this works. Oh. I didn't do any damage, and it didn't blow up the cover. So, that was shit. Uh, I'm gonna suppress again, because I want to keep this guy locked down. Winfrey needs to... Uh, she's in half cover, maybe a rocket. No? Shot is blocked. Oh. Oh man, let's see if we can get the cursor in such a place that we can get the shot off. That looks like that's going to do 8 damage. Do I want to be using a rocket this early on? I think I'm going to have to. So the muton is down and we have our second muton pinned down. Micmac is uh, not into the action, so we may as well move these guys further up into a position where they can take the next room. Now, we're going to overwatch. It's probably a little bit of overkill going overwatch here, mainly because uh, the likelihood of aliens popping out of this door are almost zero. This muton... Oh, he's going to move. Is he going to move? No. He didn't move, but he didn't shoot. Right, so this gives us the opportunity to get a little bit closer. Aye, aye, Commander. So let's see what Winfrey can do from a little bit closer. Uh, not a lot. 32% chance to hit is not great. And the alien grenade... It looks like I can't destroy this cover, which is a pain. But hopefully, I can chuck the grenade in such a way that it does do some damage. Which is what we categorically failed to do last time. And little Bucky Moving. can get into half cover here. And let's suppress... Uh, actually, she's got a 60% shot. That is better than we're going to be able to manage for almost anybody else. There's no real cover here. 35% chance, not really good enough. Any different with the laser pistol? No, still 35% chance. I don't like this shot at all. I'm going to take it. I've used the pistol there because he's only got two health and I don't really want to waste the ammo. I'm going to suppress him again. And then next time round, we're going to get really, really close and kill him. Let's stack these guys at the left hand side up against the door. Belair can stick himself right in the middle. And let's just overwatch them all. Uh, Micmac needs to uh, just hunker down because he can't move and shoot at the same turn, so he can't overwatch with his sniper rifle. Right, so we moved Dozer, um, we moved Oreo Winfrey out of the way just so that we could get Rockefeller into a position where she could take a shot. She's, it's still only a 35% chance to hit. That is crazy. 
Yeah, and unsurprisingly we miss. What a pain. I don't want to open this door until we've got rid of this muton, so the suppressive fire is... Yes, there we go. The muton tried to move. And eventually, slowly but surely, we managed to get the shot away and dispatch him. So, we need to regroup a little bit. Winfrey can start stacking up by the door. Double time. Little Bucky definitely needs to reload her weapon, but she's going to use mimetic skin, uh, mimetic skin to her advantage. And Rockefeller can also stack up by the door. No need to wait. Let's open and see what we have. And we've got another two mutons. Oh, and he comes straight for us. That's a bit silly, isn't it? Now, Derek Belair can do eight damage. Nikki CB can't. What? Okay, so Johnny McMack and Nikki CB can't see the muton because the mech is so frigging big. I'm going to kinetic strike it. Oh, do I kinetic strike it? The problem I have if I use Kinetic Strike is that the Muton is probably going to try and hit us again in retaliation. No? I can't really do much. I'm a little bit pissed off that I can't, that neither of these guys, either side of my mech, can't do anything. Reactive sensors, come on. There we go. So, one muton down. Bel Air is, is going to be toast if we're not careful. So, there's going to have to be a little bit of a healing up exercise after this. But, Bel Air can get really close to this. Heading to that location. Oh no! Now Bel Air is in trouble. Oh god. And some Seekers. That was a very silly move on my part. And I've shown yet again, happened, I think, a very, very similar thing a couple of videos ago. Where I didn't really utilize my mech and was a bit too aggressive moving forward with him. And we were very, very, very lucky not to lose a mech. But Johnny Mitmac is able to double tap some of these enemies. Let's take the guys out that we know that he can take out in one go. Now, Nikki CB. Now, Micmac, the choice is here. The 75% chance I think I want to take. But I need to make sure that I kill him. Oh, Micmac makes the 75% shot. That is great because it now means that we have two shots on this muton. Uh, and it's a berserker. So as soon as Nikki CB shoots. Oh my god, she missed that shot. What the hell? Well, what I was going to say is that when we get the shot, we'll be able to uh, drag the muton closer to us. And then Derek Belair will be able to take the second shot and, and not be in any sort of, sort of trouble. But as it happens, Belair is now in a bit of a pickle. I'm tempted to move him all the way back here. Now... Can we open up this door? I'm conscious of the Seekers at the same time. So, a fair amount of Overwatch here. 
The Berserker is going to come close. And, oh no, he's going to punch my mech again. Yeah. So, eight damage. So, a punch should see this guy off. But Derek Belair is in serious need of some health. He's lost 20 health. So now we have all of our enemies down. Ah, oh, we unlocked an achievement as well. Apart from the two Seekers, so lots of Overwatch. And Mick Mac's going to Overwatch, even though his, his cover's been blown now. And Nikki CB is going to Overwatch as well. These Seekers are out there. Now, definitely going to start healing up my mech. Healed Bel Air for eight, thanks to the skills that we have on both Little Bucky and our mech. The mech gets healed for more, and Little Bucky can heal more, so eight in one med kit is pretty damn good. And I'll debate whether I want to use a second med kit. I need to keep fairly close together, just in case the Seekers pop out. But Rockefeller can also stay concealed if she finds full cover, which it doesn't look like there is any. I think I've got my supports mixed up, mixed up there. It was uh, Nikki CB that healed our mech, wasn't it? Not Little Bucky. Little Bucky is our memetic skin expert. So a little bit of Overwatch just in case the Seekers decloak. Which I'm hoping they will now. Yep, there's one that's decloaked. Come on, Belair. Take him down. Yes. Executed. The hostile is down. Expertly done, Belair. Proof if proof are needed that you can take a goddamn hell of a beating but still maintain your focus. There's another Seeker out there, so I don't want to move... Uh, make both of my moves. I just want to move forward a little bit so I can congregate a little further up the base and then use uh, use more Overwatch. There's not really too much need to be in cover here because uh, it's a Seeker. As soon as the Seeker uncloaks, we should have enough, enough Overwatch to take them down. Nikki CB can't quite get in range to heal our mech up again, so we'll Overwatch. And Johnny McMack can do plenty of damage with his pistol, so I don't mind moving and overwatching with the Lays pistol. And Bel Air can overwatch as well. Come on, Seeker, show us where you're at. No? Fine. Back in. Use this as an opportunity to reload. And let's just carry on moving forward a little bit more. This is pretty straightforward. There's nothing particularly special that we need to worry about at this stage. One seeker in this section. And then once he's down, we can move on to the next part of the base. Belair is probably healed up as much as I need to heal him up at this stage. I'm on it, 
that 16 health we've given back to him. Although the amount of damage that he's taken means that he will have to spend a little bit of time in the med bay after this mission. If indeed we keep him alive. Oh, here's the seeker. Johnny McMack puts a very swift work into dispatching our seeker. And we are now clear and ready to progress to the next door. Oh, the music in XCOM does create a certain amount of tension. Especially when there's no aliens, you know, it's it's lulling you into that full sense of security. They really did a good job with the music. And the just, uh, our ambient sounds. Especially when you haven't uncovered any aliens and you can just hear random growls and grunts and alien noises. And as you can tell, you know, there have been a couple of occasions in the last one or two missions where we've been perhaps a little bit over aggressive and made a couple of wrong moves. And all that it takes is to uncover more than uh, the number of aliens that you feel that you can contend with uh, for it all to go wrong. If you, uh, you know, uncover two or three sets of aliens, yeah, you're, you're kind of in a world of hurt. Don't get me wrong, at this point in the game, if we only uncover one pod of, of enemies, we should have the firepower, especially with this crew that we've got with us. These are all highly ranked troops. We should have the firepower to take out anything, especially if we focus our fire in, in, in distinct areas. But the idea is not to uncover more than one pod at a time. So we open the doors and there's complete silence, so there is nothing here just yet. So we've got to plough on forward just a little bit more to find out what is in this next room. It looks like there's some high cover, so what we can do is use Little Bucky as our guinea pig and as our scout to plough on ahead and to try and uncover enemies and you can see there is nothing here but there is some high cover that she could potentially move to to see if there's any more aliens and we do uncover some there were three beeps there so we have uh okay one two and three so we've got uh, so there's four en enemies there's a mectoid a sectoid and two of the little drones and it's the mectoid that uh, I'm most worried about and the problem that we have with having little Bucky scout ahead is that uh, she's pretty much got to stay where she is now she can't move until the rest of her team catch up with her and are in position to mount an assault on the enemies that we've uncovered what I want to do is take out the mectoid first that is the immediate danger so I'm going to bring all of our crew over to the right hand side and make sure that we have enough firepower in place to deal with the mech before uh, he pretty much even knows that we're in the vicinity. So this is going to take maybe two or three turns to set up but hopefully it means that we can take out the mech without him causing us any damage whatsoever. It's going to be slow and steady, but it is going to get the job done. I'm not expecting these things to move around much at all, because we've not uncovered them. They're on guard. So Little Bucky can cause some damage from where she's at. She's got uh, some good shots from where she's positioned, but shooting obviously uh, reveals her position. So that is going to be uh, one of the shots that we take when we do finally get all of our troops in position. Now this is going to be a little bit of trial and error. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to move up enough that we can mount an attack all at once and not uncover this alien by accident. We don't, we don't want them to catch wind of where we are. Advancing. 
so even our mech needs to stay relatively well concealed. So we're going to hug this right hand side. And then I need to think of some way, some way, to be able to mount an attack all at once. And that's the tricky bit, because as soon as I reveal myself, or one of my troops reveal themselves, the aliens are going to start coming our way. Oh, wow, that's brilliant. I thought I was going to uncover the aliens at this point, but knowing that I can move forward a little bit more, I'm surprised. I'm really, really surprised that this mech can't see me. I'm delighted, but surprised. So I'm going to stick with my plasma and I'm just going to hunker down. Bel Air. I might leave moving Bel Air till very, very last. Got it moving. Because Bel Air is a bigger target, and if anything, I probably want the mech to the, the mech toy to it's shoot at Bel Air. So the idea will probably be to run, rush Bel Air out to attract the mech's attention. And that will be next turn, I think. I'm on it. And then once I have the mech's attention, we can start rushing our other guys in and taking some shots. Let's take the sector out first. So, here we go. And the little bastard of a mechtoid has gone straight onto Overwatch. He's not moved. That's a clever move. Because we now need uh, someone with lightning reflexes to take out this Overwatch, which we can do. We have Rockefeller. Now, I don't want to run out too far that I uncover more enemies. So this may have to be the safest spot. Let's run and gun so I can take a shot as well. And the question is, do I put myself up here? Yes. Okay, so the mech is taking a shot. The lightning reflexes should come into play. So the shot is missed. And now I can move everybody else into position. So Rockefeller, two shots at 60%. Or just one shot at 75. Uh, let's get some other guys in position first before we take our rapid fire shot. I want to make sure that I have some other shots and then rapid fire could be one of the last things that we do. Oh, our mech can't... S That's annoying. He's going to have to launch a grenade. I'm annoyed that he can't see that, but hey-ho. And so this is going to do really minimal damage, which is annoying. Winfrey isn't going to be able to shoot a rocket this turn, but she can hold herself up in half cover. And a 72% chance is not too shabby, so come on, Winfrey. She's missed, though. Not so good. Not great at all. And Micmac can't see from here, which is a pain. So, we're going to use rapid fire. Oh. And Rockefeller gets the first shot, but not the second. So, we are left with uh, probably someone taking some damage. Now, is the mech going to move? Oh, he's run away. Now, in a way, that's pretty good. I'm still concerned that there are enemies down here, so I'm actually going to use Little Bucky now that everyone's out of sight again. 
to stick into full cover and hopefully give me an idea of where the mech is. Uh, what have we seen? Okay, we've just got the two drones there. They should not cause us any problem whatsoever. It's the mech that I want to be able to find. And it doesn't look like... Little Bucky has uncovered where the mech is. Roger. I've got my eyes on. So I have a couple of concerns. One that the mech is just disappeared for one turn and is going to come back next turn. So I think I want to have my guys on relatively high ground and overwatched up. Now we know that Belair couldn't see a shot from where he was so he is going to need to move. And hopefully he's going to have a shot here if the mech comes into play. And uh, Nikki CB is way out of the action, so let's move her up here and Overwatch again. So, Winfrey can Overwatch, and we have a mech that's hopefully going to move forward. And come on, the, the mech has got to be down now. So that's two shots missed. Come on, Winfrey. Winfrey misses. Yes. Derek Belair gets the final shot. Our mech is down. Oof. So that was a well-executed plan. An Overwatch trap, if ever there was one. And we just have two drones to take out. But we will continue moving on with little Bucky. Oh, the drones have seen her. That's annoying. So the drones are moving towards us, which is fine. We can take them out. Ah. Well, Micmac can get a 95% shot and do 5 damage. Uh, and that's with a pistol, so he doesn't lose any ammo for doing it, so let's take that shot. Heading there now. Belair can move forward. Hopefully he gets sight of the other drone from here. No? Okay, Overwatch. I'm I'm a little bit disconcerted by our mech's sight lines, to be perfectly honest. I would have thought that he'd have been able to see the second drone, but never mind. And these guys are a little out of the way. Uh, is that cover? That doesn't... I mean, that doesn't appear to be any form of cover whatsoever, but I'm assuming the drone isn't going to be able to see me there. Got it. Move. I'm hoping I could be pretty aggressive with my movement now. I'm assuming these are the only enemies in this space, so I've just got one drone to worry about. And an overwatch shot should... But pay to him. Two overwatch shots. Let's not make any mistake. The drone is gone. So let's move Johnny Micmac. I think I'm going to continue to keep all of my squad together. In this large room. But little Bucky can certainly start scouting ahead again. If she can find full cover. Which she can. So let's move here and see if we uncover any aliens. We have. So I want to see what I've uncovered. Is it another... Ah, so it's a drone and it's a cyber disc. So we have a little bit more action to take care of here. I don't want to attract the cyber disc's attention, so I'm probably going to move everybody over to this right-hand side so that, yet again, we have the element of surprise when we're attacking and have the advantage of taking these things down quickly and efficiently wherever possible. Yeah, I don't really want Belair to take that route. Let's go up here instead. Rockefeller can't move anywhere near as far, so she can make her way over to everybody else in her own time. And 
And Winfrey, you can stick yourself in this corner. And I think this is where we are going to leave the episode. It's been around about half an hour or so. So I will leave it there. We have much, much more of the alien base to do. Please make sure that you check in next time round to see us complete the alien base mission. Hit that subscribe button if you want to get all of my content first, be it NHL or XCOM. And don't forget to like the video. It means an awful lot. And I know you've been enjoying the XCOM content so far. So I will see you again very soon.